Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture. I hope you had opportunity to go through the last class material and uh, we can have a brief uh, recap of what we did last time. So we discussed the dissolving metal reductions in the last class where we had seen that uh, reactions with uh, lithium in liquid ammonia or uh, say sodium or potassium uh, in alcoholic solvents like ethanol uh, or magnesium in ethanol or some um, reactions with zinc in acetic acid. These are the reactions which allow the reduction of ketones to the corresponding alcohol and we discuss in great detail how these uh, reductions uh, allow the thermodynamically more stable trans product in uh, cyclic cases. We also saw that the reaction proceeds via radical anion uh, and this radical anion can allow the uh, coupling to take place and we can form the uh, CC bond uh, easily and we can get a dianion of this type which can lead to the formation of 1 to diol. We also saw that uh, uh, titanium 0 uh, permits uh, the uh, coupling of the carbonyl groups uh, to form the corresponding olefin at one stretch in one go. But also uh, we saw that uh, titanium trichloride uh, and DME together uh, and then in the presence of uh, zinc copper couple uh, leads carbonyl groups to um, form the uh, corresponding diol. So one can easily uh, carry out the reaction at relatively low temperature uh, with this system here and one can get the diol. If one heats uh, the same reaction by heating condition then uh, of course one can get the olefin. This is what we discussed uh, uh, in the last lecture that uh, titanium 0 uh, if it is done under uh, normal magmatic coupling olefination conditions then directly we get the olefin. Uh, on the other hand if uh, one wants the diol to form the pinnacles to form these are basically pinnacles and if that is what is required then the reaction can be carried out at relatively low temperature and with uh, titanium 0 form from uh, TiCl3 DME uh, crystalline complex uh, with the reduction with zinc copper couple. So uh, the same zinc copper couple uh, uh, either we can also use uh, potassium metal as such and uh, with the TiCl3 uh, it allows uh, deoxygenation of vicinal diols uh, to the corresponding olefin uh, if the reaction is carried out at a high temperature. That means if the reaction is run in T refluxing THF with excess of potential potassium metal, the diols are essentially converted to the corresponding diolate and uh, they react with titanium to form the same intermediate which is implicated in the magma coupling. We will discuss that in a minute uh, how the two are converging into the same intermediate. But uh, if we start with uh, acyclic systems uh, such as here, we can see that uh, there is not much of uh, stereoselectivity uh, that is observed. This is the equation 1 and uh, trans uh, diols um, uh, deoxygenate as readily as the corresponding cis isomer. For example, here it is a mixture of cis and trans. So if this is beta oriented for example and this is a mixture, uh, so we can expect both cis and trans diols but then a mixture of cis and trans diol directly gives the, the corresponding olefin. This is what uh, indicates that the mechanism uh, must be involving 
in a, in a non-concerted fashion. So you have a diol which is um, uh, stereo uh, chemically properly oriented. However, it leads to the 33 percent formation of cis olefin and 45 percent formation of the trans olefin. So um, when the reaction is uh, carried out um, in such a way that the vicinal diols are allowed to react under the same conditions uh, in which we had originally formed the, the diol, but now we start heating then the corresponding olefins form. So these two cases are very good indications of uh, how the reactions may proceed and therefore it will reflect on the mechanism of the reaction. So a uh, lot of work has been done by McMurray and others and uh, how does this diol give the olefin? So essentially first thing is that there is an oxophilicity of the titanium that allows the formation of the olefin because there has to be a tendency of the oxygen of the diol to uh, interact with the titanium. So there are three uh, such possibilities which have been uh, implicated. One is that if we start with the diol like this, one to diol, it could form a, a cyclic uh, transitions or intermediate of this type where only one titanium is uh, involved and therefore we have two oxygens of the diol interacting with one titanium and that is in titanium 2 form. That is if we take uh, um, uh, the diol and have only one uh, titanium 0 uh, giving 2 electrons and then uh, combining by the loss of hydrogen. So we can get this type of cyclic uh, 5 member intermediate or, uh, or a species of this type. The other possibility is that uh, each of the uh, hydroxy group uh, interacts with the titanium uh, and uh, forms an intermediate of this kind where the two oxygen uh, titanium bond this uh, particular part of the molecules are away from each other. So uh, this also can lead to the formation of the olefin here and this also can lead to the formation of the olefin here. Uh, and the third possibility is that uh, there is a basically simple coordination that means the OH or the O minus that is formed during the reaction uh, simply uh, coordinates, simply attaches itself to the uh, titanium 0 uh, part and uh, then of course there is a transfer of the oxygen to the titanium. Of course when we talk about these and if there is a formation of uh, this kind of species on the surface of the titanium 0 there will be titanium 1, there will be titanium 2 and um, of course titanium 0. So what these uh, possibilities suggest that we can expect uh, such intermediates uh, which are uh, likely to form. How do we rule out uh, one or the other and, and, and see which exists or which forms the best way? Now many experiments have been done and this McMurray has uh, written a review uh, which uh, you can check it here, Accounts of Chemical Research in 1983. So uh, what happens in here is um, uh, that uh, McMurray took uh, two different types of uh, rigid and uh, locked alcohols which can easily come from this uh, Norbornin system. Uh, and one of them is, is a cis diol and the other one is a trans diol. So, so um, uh, obviously uh, one can expect that the uh, intermediate that we discussed where we had this uh, oxygen and oxygen and then coming uh, onto the same titanium uh, to coming and forming this type of uh, intermediate. Uh, one can expect that to happen with the cis uh, diol, but it was found that both cis and the trans diol, they are equally uh, reactive and they form the corresponding olefin without any problem. So it is very clear that the uh, formation of such intermediate uh, 
uh, is very unlikely because both of them they react equally facile. If there was uh, a difference then of course the trans would have reacted slower than the cis because formation of such pi member intermediate would be better and easier with uh, cis diol. The other reaction that they carried out was this uh, cis uh, diol and, and the trans diol and it was found that the cis diol reacts very easily and the trans one does not react at all. So what does it mean if we look at the conformations of these uh, diols uh, we can see that the 2 hydroxy group in the uh, trans diol would uh, be here like this and the second possibility which we uh, considered earlier was that each hydroxy group coordinates to the titanium um, species here uh, where the two of them are interacting uh, separately. But then uh, that obviously is not happening because this is not reacting. So there is no reaction here it means there is no product formation it means that uh, this binding of the oxygens uh, to individual titaniums uh, is not possible. On the other hand if we, uh, if we take uh, the cis diol where we can anticipate that such a reaction will allow the OH here and the OH here both are cis to each other then of course they can go to the same intermediate as this. But obviously they cannot they need not go through this uh, two different titanium binding. So these two possibilities are completely ruled out. Now the third type of uh, possibility of the mechanism uh, basically involves uh, attachment of the oxygen to the titanium surface and that eventually leads to the formation of the olefins. Now for both the types of reactions that is uh, coupling of carbonyl uh, compounds to form olefins and conversion of diols to olefins can be considered and that is shown below here. The reaction takes place on the surface of the titanium particle and we can also explain the loss of stereochemistry uh, by uh, invoking a stepwise fragmentation of the bound diolate. Now what is happening is the titanium surface in which generally we show as titanium 0 but it also has titanium plus 1 and titanium plus 2 species. When a carbonyl uh, compound or a dicarbonyl compound of this kind where the two carbonyl groups are attached to the same uh, molecule, when uh, such a molecule comes in contact with the titanium surface then there is a transfer of electron from titanium to carbonyl carbon uh, resulting into a radical anion of uh, this particular type here as I have shown on the top and uh, in a similar fashion there is a, a transfer of an electron from the titanium surface to the other carbonyl leading to another radical anion. Now these anions on the oxygens will of course will have an interaction or attachment to the titanium surface and the uh, radicals uh, which are uh, on the carbons would couple to form a carbon carbon bond. Now since the titanium surface has lost an electron so we are showing it here as a titanium 1 and of course uh, uh, then you have the oxygen uh, titanium attachment. Now what happens is uh, we then uh, allow or we invoke or we propose that there is a carbon oxygen bond cleavage resulting into a radical formation and of course the oxygen radical would take an electron from the titanium surface and the titanium surface will become uh, titanium 2 for example from titanium 1 to titanium 2 and there is a titanium oxygen double bond. And then uh, in a stepwise manner uh, the second carbon oxygen bond then uh, would break and uh, leads to another radical here and of course oxygen radical. The oxygen radical will form the titanium oxygen double bond the way I have shown it up 
and the radical which is generated here would couple with this radical to form uh, this particular olefin as the final product. Now, this uh, titanium oxygen uh, double bond would uh, lead to what is proposed to be a titanium dioxide eventually. Now, uh, uh, obviously, here the stepwise uh, fragmentation has been suggested mainly because uh, it uh, allows you to lose the stereochemistry. Because if we uh, start with a particular uh, diol of a particular stereochemistry, it is found that eventually it loses the stereochemistry, and that is the reason why stepwise fragmentation has been proposed. Now, if we take a diol of this kind and treat it with uh, potassium and titanium trichloride under the McMurray coupling conditions, then of course, we expect that uh, potassium diolate will form and it will have similar type of interactions on the titanium surface. As we have uh, discussed that the titanium 0 surface not only has titanium 0 particles, but also other low valent titanium particles like titanium plus 1 or titanium plus 2. And therefore, uh, the interaction of the potassium diolate with the titanium surface leads to similar type of uh, uh, intermediates of this kind, which then eventually lead to the uh, formation of the olefin and of course, titanium dioxide or similar type of titanium species. So, this is how the mechanism is perceived and this is the mechanism that is believed to be uh, operating uh, in this particular McMurray coupling case. What is the disadvantage of this McMurray coupling uh, is that the reaction is limited uh, because uh, many functional groups are, are not easily uh, tolerable under these conditions. So, they can get also get reduced because it is powerful reducing system. There is the ketones, thioketones for example, ketones, thioketones, aciloins, uh, the hydroxy ketones, bromohydrines, oxyranes that is epoxides, cyanohydrines, allylic or benzylic uh, alcohols or, and some other functional groups can also get affected by this particular reagent. So, so, there is a disadvantage, but at the same time the advantage is that uh, we can easily carry out the coupling either in an intermolecular fashion or an intramolecular fashion. We can stop at the diol stage, we can also uh, make an intramolecular coupling and get uh, medium size ring or large rings and of course, we can convert the uh, diols to the corresponding olefins uh, using the same condition, but by refluxing or heating at a high temperature under the same reducing system conditions. So, there are advantages and there are also disadvantages, but uh, because of the simplicity of the reaction, it has been used in making different types of olefins or diols using this reaction. We go for the next uh, 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 part of this particular dissolving metal reductions where we uh, take say for example, sodium or potassium or lithium liquid ammonia conditions and try to look at the reductions of alpha beta unsaturated ketones. We had seen the normal uh, reductions of uh, cyclic ketones or a simple ketone where reduction gives the corresponding alcohol. Here, if we take an alpha beta unsaturated ketone like this and transfer an electron from um, lithium or potassium or sodium, uh, obviously first thing will happen is the transfer of the electron occur at the carbonyl carbon here. So, you can anticipate to form uh, something like this. Here uh, you have an O minus and you have an electron here, which of course uh, will uh, uh, go to this uh, particular carbon atom and form this intermediate of this type. So, we have a possibility of uh, such a movement of uh, uh, here there is an electron. So, you can anticipate such a such a resonance structure of the radical anion to form. And uh, when second electron is transferred by the metal here we can expect that a dianion is formed and this dianion on, on uh, protonation uh, gives the corresponding 
enol and this enol will obviously be in uh, equilibrium with the corresponding ketone. So under these conditions what is found that the reduction of uh, an alpha beta unsaturated ketone uh, with uh, metal liquid ammonia system uh, leads to the formation of the corresponding saturated ketone that means the only double bond that has been reduced. This is a very important reaction and uh, especially uh, it is uh, very useful when uh, there are bicyclic enones or in a, in a system like steroids and terpenoids uh, we look at the reductions and uh, it helps in uh, designing the, the stereochemistry of the molecule. Uh, so you have um, a system like this here say uh, you have a ketone uh, of this type and then how does the reduction occur. Now obviously we expect the reduction should give the uh, corresponding ketone but more importantly what is there is what is the hydrogen that is coming here, what is the stereochemistry of the hydrogen at this stage that is what is most important. And uh, in that respect a lot of work has been done and Gilbert Stork at Columbia University has devised a rule that the reduction product is the most stable of the two isomers with the newly induced beta hydrogen being axial to the ketone ring. For example, if this particular hydrogen which is what is expected to come uh, after the reduction uh, it prefers to remain axial. So this particular uh, hydrogen is axially oriented in the ring that contains the ketone. We will see how does this uh, happen. So there are uh, essentially uh, three possibilities. So we can write that bicyclic uh, ketone into this particular conformation and as we can see that uh, one of the left side ring is uh, obviously half chair and the other one is uh, expected to be a chair. And therefore we have uh, written uh, like this particular way half chair and the normal chair. And once the electron is transferred to this particular carbon atom, the anion, the dianion which we had discussed earlier would be something like this here. And we can expect that the uh, anion at the junction would be axially oriented. And uh, such an intermediate when it gets protonated or when the uh, we can also use either a proton as an electrophile or we can use any other electrophile which we can term it as E plus then the electrophile comes in this fashion and what we are expecting is and that is what Gilbert Stork suggested that the proton or the electrophile would come in the axial orientation. Now, we uh, can write uh, in a slightly different way uh, that is we can write uh, that the conformation of the dianion may be uh, somewhat like this where it is cis orientation. For example, here we had this uh, R group axial and this anion is also axial and therefore 1 2 diaxial would be trans relationship. But now we are talking about uh, this being axial and this being equatorial therefore we are talking about a cis decalin type of system. We can also uh, write slightly differently another uh, decalin which is also cis and in this particular case for example this was uh, axial here this was also axial and this is equatorially oriented. The anion is equatorially oriented. So we can write flip the rings in such a way that this R1 is equatorial, R is equatorial which were earlier axial and since the uh, anion was equatorial now it has become axial. So we have basically flipped, we have got another conformation but cis conformation 
and of course cis Deckelian system but in a different conformation. So uh, we expect these uh, three types of uh, um, orientations one being this number one here which is trans Deckelian type then we have second uh, which is cis Deckelian type and the third also cis Deckelian type. So these are the three possibilities we exist and here of course the, the uh, electrophile comes in an axial fashion and here as you can see that this will give an axial uh, electrophile and this will give uh, an equatorial electrophile. So let us see uh, which one would be the best. So we have this uh, number 2 here, you have number 3 here and we have number 1 here. If we look at number 1 and number 2, if we take these two cases, they are stereoelectronically favorable. That is because the anion p orbital either here or here for example and you consider the uh, pi orbitals of the uh, double bond, this is the double bond, this is the double bond. If you look at the pi orbitals, so they are all planar and this is also essentially planar. So there will be a proper overlap and stereoelectronically these are favorable conformations. So the only other problem is that when the electrophile either a proton or any other electrophile when that approaches as you can see that in the second case where the uh, R group here is actually oriented and when the electrophile approaches from the equatorial side we are talking about 1 2 actual equatorial which is cis and there will be a steric hindrance in addition to the steric hindrance that of course one has it here but that is anyway existing in all the cases. So when the elect incoming electrophile comes in and approaches this particular anion you have a steric hindrance uh, offered by the R group which is at the junction. Whereas that is not the case in this case here because the incoming electrophile is coming from the actual side from the below and has nothing to do with the R group or R1 on the top. On the other hand if we take uh, the third conformation here like this we can see that the anion there is no stereoelectronic overlap possible. If we look at the anion which is actually oriented and that is actually orthogonal to the double bonds uh, uh, p orbitals or the pi orbitals which are here. So uh, basically there is no overlap between the uh, p orbital containing anion and the pi bond there is no overlap at all. So uh, stereoelectronically it is not possible and also if you look at the uh, approach of the electrophile uh, to this uh, particular anion then also you have uh, there is a uh, cis uh, interaction or the 1 2 orientation will be like a axial equatorial this is going to be axial and therefore there will be a steric hindrance here. So the third one is the worst among the three that is both stereoelectronically as well as sterically it is not feasible and therefore uh, the only way reaction occurs is via the conformation of type 1 which leads to the formation of the electrophile coming in uh, uh, from the axial side and that is what is in conformity with the Stokes uh, uh, rule. So we will uh, stop it at this uh, stage and uh, we will take up uh, other aspects of reduction in the next class. You can study these uh, reductions carefully and we will uh, discuss it uh, during our question answer if you have any questions too. Thank you and bye.